Okay, we're back at it again. Took a few days off doing life stuff. You know, life life gets busy sometimes. Let's take a look at the map. We just did our first coup rounds. So now we're officially into our second coup round. That means we have, uh, what do we have? Uh, win, win cow key. See, I know, I know enough about Vietnamese to know that the first name is Win there. Okay. But I'm probably mispronouncing everything else. Uh, as we revealed, this is now the new leader, um, whereas before we used to get bonus aid when we did train actions. And I'm pretty sure I missed at least one bonus aid, but I caught one of them. So, you know, that happens in games. Sometimes you play games and you don't catch everything. It's cool. Just roll with it. Roll with the punches. You can see on this guy, key here, um, every time we want to do pacification, which if you remember is what lets us kind of adjust, um, especially for the Arvin and even for the U.S. because this counts for all pacification, either, either done by Arvin or the U.S. It costs four now, four resources per terror or level uh, increased. So probably going to be a little harder to build support for the U.S. and for the uh, Republic of Vietnam when key is in the, the leadership box uh so we did the first coup round uh you know it's one of those funny things you know when you play games like this and you do recordings and then you stop and i'm sure this even i mean this happened to me when i played games in real life and then i think about it you know a few hours later you realize you made mistakes <laughs> and then you probably could have done things a lot better right it's called getting better at your games one of the things i could have done if you remember we did a bunch of like rally actions. I think it was like a rally and subvert turn with the VC, our blue friends here. And I was like, oh, I should rally and play coup. And then I was like, nah, I'm not going to spend the money. Like, come on, that's crazy. Uh, that was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. I should have rallied in play coup because if, if I would have been thinking I had a base here and four gorillas and there were four cubes in the area. So, the, so even though the U.S. has more cubes now because they use their... Um, the coup round to bring more of their cubes in. They did more of the, the commitment phase. Let's let's use the correct terminology. They brought more cubes in during the commitment phase. Uh, even though they had f fewer cubes on the board, they did have the ability to bring four into play coup and sweep that area right. And then, you know, we couldn't have anticipated that tempo would have favored them and they would have been able to go first because obviously if the VC could have gone first in the next card, they could have just whisked those dudes back underground. It still would have been smart to spend a resource, get two more gorillas there, and then we would have been safe from having the base removed. They still probably would have gotten rid of the four gorillas that were like active, but we could have saved that area and had a base um, that could have netted us an additional resource, could have kept us in a good position here. You know, it is what it is, but let me tell you something. I was doing that because I was afraid of resources. Well, we got a plenty of good resources. We were doing fine. And, and if you come in second and have a bunch of resources, you still lost. You you did not win. So uh, spend your resources, people. Sometimes you, you want to be conscious, especially in this game, because you never know how long the rounds are going to go, right? Because a randomized kind of uh, length. So I think that last one was a fairly long round. So I'm thinking that we don't have to worry about this next round being really long. There are times where like you'll play the game and the coup card comes up like very quickly. And then you pretty much know that the next round is going to be a really long one unless somehow like the next coup card is at the top of the of its deck, right? Um, you you kind of get a feel for it. So sometimes, especially when you're the Arvin because your resources cost so much and like they're pretty poor right now. Like they only have 22 resources and this could be a, a sort of long round. So we're going to have to be really cognizant of that cost. Anyway, should have sent the money in play coup to help the VC uh, have a better position. But, you know, that's how it is, man. Like I said, roll with the punches. Roll with the punches. So let me back back out here. Let's do that. Fix it to the height. Let's take a look at the map here to refresh your memory and to refresh mine as well. Uh, the VC, uh, or I'm sorry, the NVA has been building up. They actually have quite a few pieces out. So they can start making some moves, I think, soon. They themselves are still fairly poor. They have nine resources. Uh, and the trail got degraded heavily. They weren't. They, they kind of built it up, but then the airstrike power from the U.S. was able to degrade it. So not a ton of gains there. And hopefully we'll be able to build that up and keep it up this round. The VC, uh, except for that blunder sort of in play coup, actually didn't do so bad. They were able to... The one the one nice thing about the play coup mishap was that the the U.S. lost coin control here in Ben Din, and so we were able to use our ability to agitate here and bring this up to passive... Or, I'm sorry, active opposition, right? Okay, you can see that there. Boom. So that's nice. And this is still passive opposition, so we can still rally here. That's nice. Um, they did bring up the cities, the Arvin, the U.S., or the Arvin, I think, spent the money to do this. Brought some of the cities up to passive support, so we can't just rally 
in the cities anymore. Like those gorillas, those are going to be kind of scant forces for a while. Uh, yeah, every city I think now has some sort of support. Yeah, so now we can't just rally in the cities. We're going to have to think more about infiltrating them or like getting guys in or try to draw cubes out and then make it easier to send our own troops in. Um, yeah, so that's going to be an interesting little wrinkle we're going to have to worry about. Not too crazy. Uh, and the VC, they built a base down here. That's right. So we were able to get a base in, in Ken Yang. Ken Yang. On, on when. On when. Anyway, I'm so bad. I really, I do mean to look these things up and then I just don't. And then I sound uh, ignorant sometimes. So apologies on the names. Apologies. Okay, let's jump right into it. So we reset all the eligible factions. I've blathered on enough. Let's do some card play. Oh, that's right. We're going to start here with an Arvin capability, and the Arvin gets to go first. Hey, this is great. Uh, so the Unshaded event. This is basically the other side. This is the good side of the capability, right? Uh, if we take this as the Arvin, one governed space may transfer aid to patronage without shifting support. That's huge. That's huge. Because we do want to build our patronage as the Arvin, and in, usually when we do so using the governed special action, we have to shift the province in question or city one level towards neutrality. And so you have to have the place in support anyway to do this in order to build your patronage network. You can't just do it in a neutral city. This is actually huge for us. And this is a wonderful long-term capability. Um, the negative side, if for some reason we weren't able to take this on the positive side, the negative side would say Arvin govern and pacify is maximum one space. That would be not great. Uh, this actually is tremendously good like i would pretty much almost always take capabilities if they come up unless i'm just really hurting for ops or needs and as we talked about earlier we're running out of money for the arvin so hey we're taking this capability baby we're taking it so we'll go here we're going to do the event i don't even care like the next faction up is the vc i don't care man they're going to get an op and special it happens it's going to happen they're probably going to be able to use that to good effect but um, we, that capability is too good to pass up, especially because our winning conditions rely on building the patronage up. So we want to have ability to do that. Okay. That's called the Mandate of Heaven. Oh, dope. So let's go down our little list here. Where is it? Mandate. Mandate. Okay, boom. So we pull this out, and I think we had another capability, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. The PT-76 for the NVA. So they've got a little special ability, too wonderful wonderful uh i like that also hey update i found out how to do terror markers remember how i spent like a minute of dead air looking around like a fool trying to find them hey right click the the number never would have thought of that if you right click the number you can actually like dispatch troops there so i don't have to drag and click them we could just do this i probably will still drag and click them because i like doing that we could place pawns though that's a lot nicer that's a lot easier and you can place a terror marker wonderful we'll do that when it comes up okay Let's do this. Oh, let's go back to our, our, our determined maximum efficiency percentage, which is 47. That lets us get the most map on the screen and still see cards. Boom. Okay, so we're gonna do op and special here. So what do we wanna do? What do we wanna do? We have nine resources. We may wanna consider using this opportunity to tax because I could start building us up the resources we can use throughout the campaign. We do have a lot of nice places we could tax in relatively easily. Yeah, we got bases everywhere. Oh, this is looking so nice. This is looking very nice. I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna rally and we're gonna tax because we still have 10 gorillas out. We wanna be always be trying to be very annoying. We could do like a subvert activity which would also be helpful in some ways because we could start drawing down the cubes in the cities here. I could also ambush or terror in this city and bring this to neutral, which might not be a terrible idea either. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any gorillas in places that are not already active because terror is one way to bring up, ah, oh, I could terror here and bring and secure this. Would that be worth it? Let's take a look at our special stuff. Oh, also, I guess I don't have to keep shifting the screen over because... Let me have this. Yeah, the player aid cards. Hell yeah. Sorry, I used a slight curse word for some people. So we could terror. We could definitely do that. That would let us pick um, the subvert. That would be kind of nice. Uh, we could also tax with a terror. Hmm, this is pretty nice. I actually might want to do that. I might actually really want to do that. I could also, yeah, we might want to tax, honestly. And terror. I think this is a great, great idea. <laughs> 
I like this idea. And I think we can do as many spaces as we want, right? Sorry, I just pulled this up. One resource per province or city, dope. Tax, we can only pick four spaces. Okay, not a big deal. So the wonderful thing about this is that we can manipulate our op uh, sequencing to make this work better. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and let's, so let's find our two provinces because our two population places are the best place to do taxing. Here's what I mean by that. We're gonna place a black pawn there, white pawn here. Oh, does it? Oh, nice. Okay, so it does stack them. We'll have to do that. That's not a big deal. That's a two space. We'll definitely do this in Tainan. That's such a like a wonderful place to do things. It is kind of our little stronghold. And uh, you know what? Oh, this would keep it that way. I'm actually okay with that. I think I'm really okay with that. So we'll do that here too. So this will be our four places that we do the black pawn. Okay. Because we can only pick four places to do that. We'll also place a white pawn here as well because we'd like to rally. Now I'll show you what this is going to do for us. Do we want to rally or do we want to terror anywhere else? Yes, yes we do. We want to terror here. Is there anywhere else we could do that for an effect? No, so yeah, we'll add a white pawn here, okay. Now you might be saying, no, what, we haven't really been able to use this to our, to our benefit. Why would I want to, to why would I want to uh, tax and then terror? Okay, really simple. When we tax, we move, we move one gorilla that's underground to active, right? Let's pull this up again with an underground VC and no coin control. Oh yeah, it's gotta be no coin control. So I can't tax, oh, I'm not taxing there, that's fine. Not coin control here, no coin, no coin, no coin, we are gold. Okay, so we activate a gorilla and then we shift it one level to active support and then add to our resources equal to the econ or twice the population. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna shift this towards support, right? You're like, oh, okay, well, we're sort of weakening our position. We're gonna get four resources for doing that. So we'll go ahead and do that first. So I get, because it's twice the population, the population is two. So everywhere we go, we're gonna activate a guy. We're gonna shift it. We're gonna activate a guy. We're gonna shift it towards uh, support. Yeah, yeah. Let's shift it towards support and activate. Okay. It does leave us a little vulnerable here. Oh wait, I can't do that here because then he can't tear. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so we can't do that here. And I'll show you why in a second. In fact, what we'll do is we'll just do it up here and that's gonna be totally fine because that's another two plate, two spot. All right, so we're gonna activate a gorilla, active, shift it towards support. Okay, so we did that in four spaces. So we get four, eight, 12, 16. Okay, 16 spaces or 16 resources is what we got there. That's huge. So we had nine, we're gonna have 16, so now we're at 25. Oh, baby, that's good. That's real good. Okay. Now we're gonna pay for our terror ops because terror costs one per op space we pick. So we got one, two, three, four, five, five, right? One, two, yeah, yeah, five. Yep. So now we go down to 20. But here's what terror does. We activate an underground gorilla. And then we shift it. It's not like I've done terror on this one. Activate underground VC grill. If you're in a province or city, place a terror. If none, uh, then shift it one level to. Oh, if there's no terror markers, you place one. And then you shift it one level to active opposition. And if it was an LOC, we could place a sabotage if there was not a sabotage marker there. Okay. Hot. So we'll put a terror marker there. Boom. That's the terror marker. This moves it back up to active. So basically we did that. We kind of like hurt ourselves because we want as much opposition as possible, but then we just boost it back up. So that's why we would order the ops that way. Okay, we can delete that. We can go ahead and delete that because I don't need to worry about it too much. All right, adjust it to opposition and we did it down here too. All right, look, place a terror marker and move it towards opposition. Wasn't that passive oppose? Did I mess that up? I'm pretty sure it was passive oppose already. I thought so. If not, I'll go look at the old video and fix that. I thought it was that way. Maybe I just goofed that and I didn't think about that. Hmm. I thought it was that way already. Maybe I maybe I was wrong, but I'll fix it. So we did that. We did terror, went to active, we put oh we didn't put a terror marker. We definitely want to put a terror marker there, because that's how we know we did that. So we did a terror marker there, we do a terror marker there, we did a terror marker there. Okay, cool. And then up here, we're gonna do this guy active. Oh, 
bomb. We're going to put a terror marker there. And this goes towards uh, neutral. Oh, no, no, not active. Boom, now it's neutral. Now we can rally there if we want. Mm, that's going to be hot. If they don't fix that soon, and because it costs them more to do so, it's going to be painful for them to actually get that done. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so we boosted our resources up to a very healthy, respectable 20. We did sort of make ourselves a little weaker. Um, do we have, Does taxing require us to activate a guy? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I need to do is activate both these gorillas. That's what I forgot. All right, so that stays there. He didn't do anything there. That's fine. We activated one, and we did a terror, so we got to activate another guy. Activated one. Tax, and we did terror. Okay, yeah, tax and terror. Okay, boom. I did it correctly. There we go. <clears throat> so now we have a healthy amount of resources, and we are a little weaker. Like, it makes it easier to bomb us. That could definitely happen. Um, but honestly, I think that was worth it because it, it gave us a huge boost in resources. Now we don't have to worry about taxing probably for the rest of this round. Cool, so we're gonna end the card play. No, 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 we're gonna do infection play. Oof, that was close. Uh, these guys go to ineligible. And discard you, and draw a card. So like the US gets to go first here, that probably, you know, we probably should have thought about that because they can actually do stuff, you know, like they could do another air bombing campaign and they might be able to take us out of Kuang Ten or whatever. And that might not be so great, but that's, that's a risk I'm willing to take. You got to play a little fast and loose sometimes. All right, what's the event here? Gulf of Tonkin. Oh, what, what started it all? Uh, unshaded, US free airstrikes. Oh, that's not great. Then move six pieces from out of play into into any cities. So I should have probably looked at that event. Probably should have looked at the event, but I'm not gonna roll it back. We're just gonna keep rolling. I could this is actually a pretty great event for the US, honestly. Move six pieces from out of play to any cities. Oof, oof, that's good. It's more good stuff. It actually is really good. Unshaded, uh, aid minus one per casualty would not matter. We don't have any casualties. This actually has zero downside, does everything we want. We get a free airstrike, and we get to move six pieces. We're taking that event. Whoa, boy, we're taking that event. All right, so let's roll die, and let's uh, hope for some high rolls. A four. Okay, rolled four. That's, so here we have choices. So we have choices. We could spend two and move the trail down to zero. That's a, that's a hot thing, because that means NVA pieces can march to one space only. That's That would be nice. They would have to spend money to fix their trail up, and that would put the brakes on them. But if we did that, we wouldn't be able to take out this base, because we have to spend three points to get rid of that. Um, hmm, we could bomb this, but it would just drive this to active. Yeah, I think the evaluation I'm looking at here is like, should I spend three to kill that and then spend the other points somewhere else to knock off a guy, probably like here? Or maybe I would take it, see, this just isn't a ton of opportunity, but I do want those six pieces. I think, I think we're gonna spend, I think we're gonna, we're gonna maybe make a little mistake here, but we're gonna spend two resources, two of the four there on the airstrike to move the trail down to zero because I wanna get the NVA hurting. I don't want them like getting a bunch of resources. I want them to have to spend two to improve the trail to a one. Like that seems like a big win. And then hopefully I can do something over here later to just get rid of that base or at least force the NVA to rally, which is not like the most awesome op for them. All right, return it, return it. I was told we could do this and they wouldn't. Oh good, they didn't show up active again. That's hot, we don't have to keep flipping them. Now this was nice also because the airstrike normally drives in a, a selected region towards opposition, but this is already the most opposed it could be. So that actually was kind of like a free, uh, free airstrike as it were uh, to hit Kuang Ten. Okay, so we get six cubes from out of play to any cities. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. That's gonna let us do a lot of good stuff. I wonder if we should just try to go in and knock out Tainan like right now, like try to use that. So let's do it. Let's bring six of these cubes. Boop. You come with me. We're gonna unlock. Boom. Oh, this could be really good for us. This could be so good. Okay, we're gonna end the faction play. The NVA now gets to do an op and add a special. Now they would like to start hurting the US. They really do that. They also would like to build a trail up. They'd also like to not spend money. 
<laughs> they'd also like to do a lot of things. So let's take a look and see what we think the NBA would want to do. We're not going to be able to infiltrate. Bombard sounds like the best op right now. We, ambush would be great, but it can only accompany a march or attack, and we can only march into one space anyway because our trail is so poor. We're going to have to improve the trail. We have to do this. I think we're going to rally and bombard. Yeah, I think that's what's going to have to happen. Ah, so we're going to place a gorilla, replace two with a base. We might do that. And now if it's a base, we can do gorillas up to trail value plus that. So the trail value is worth zero. That's pretty lame. So we'd only get the base's value. And if desired, we can improve the trail. Okay, so where do we want to do this? They're about to make a big move here, I feel like. I feel like that's a big thing. We could get two more gorillas here at the parrot's beak. But they already have two. We could do this. Yeah, here's what we're going to do pieces all right we don't have to do that right we can just do this white pawn there oh but we're poor so we really got to be careful about where we rally stuff white pawn there uh, i really would like to build up another gorilla here or build up more cubes here but i think that's the infiltrate and we can't do that so we're just gonna spend two man we are just hurting for money we are hurting 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 for money is, oh, no, wait, the NBA is 25. The NBA does not have 25. The NBA got dragged over. That was an accident. People saw that earlier and probably were screaming at the, at the screen, no, Jay, no, but I fixed it. Don't worry. Old Jay caught that one. So we're going to pay one here, and what we're going to do is we're going to cash these guys in and make them a base. Same thing here. Cash in, make another base. Okay, hot. That's what we kind of want to do is get a bunch of our bases, especially like in Laos and Cambodia. We make money off those, so that's really good to do. Then we can bombard. I believe we can only bombard in one space. One or two spaces, each with at least three uh, U.S. and or Arvin troops. And an Arvin base and adjacent to a space with three NBA troops. So we need to pick a place that has a concentration of the U.S. or Arvin. It needs to be adjacent to a space with three cubes. Um... So this wouldn't count. This wouldn't count either. So these three cubes can't bombard anything good. Um, this counts because it is adjacent to play coup. So we will bombard and play coup. And then down here, I don't have three cubes. So I can't bombard um, anything around here. And plus there's nothing to bombard. So we'd like to bombard more. There's just not enough choice targets. And these don't count right. Let me double check. At least three U.S. and or Arvin troops. Yeah, it has to be troops. Or if they just have a base there, you can just do it. So we only can do here one. We're going to bombard that moves one to the casualties. Slow and steady, baby. Slow and steady. And that's kind of what the NBA wants to do. They want to just inflict um, attrition-like casualties. Remember, we want to try to get at least three. We want to do it in groups of three. But we want at least three. Three would be really, really nice for us. Okay. Do that, move these guys to eligible. All right, Gulf of Tonkin, that was, that was lame. That was a really good event. All right, Westmoreland's up. Let's see, uh, unshaded event, US free airlifts and then sweeps, no moves. Um, or assaults, no Arvin <laughs> in two spaces and then airstrikes. Damn, that was, they got some like back-to-back -back good airstrike uh, abilities. Shaded event, shift three provinces with no police each, two levels towards active opposition. Oh, oh, three provinces with no police, two levels. Oh man, that's really good. Although we actually kind of, they already have police in a lot of places. So we couldn't do it here. Like that could be really helpful there, but I don't think we're going to worry about that. Oh, see, oh, they have police here and they have police in all the cities. So maybe that event, it would look good if we had less police everywhere but they kind of have all their police cubes out and i think we did a good job of distributing them all around the cities and stuff so we're not going to take that event that event is no bueno and who's the next one up oh the arvin goes last and the arvin might really want to use that event because given the u.s a free airlift is big and it gets another free airstrike. And we just really can't allow that because our NBA buddy just improved the trail and I don't want to have them just go bankrupt. So we're just going to do 
op only no special activity and that's technically that's really okay with me that's really okay i would like to do the special activity i would like to do that but mo most importantly as the uh, vc player i want to start rallying again because i have some some vulnerable people so we're going to rally here get those guys going we're going to rally here because now we actually have a base so we can start really pouring in troops i have two more bases i need to put down somewhere so we need to worry, worry about that I'm a little worried about Tain in, so let's go ahead and rally here, man, while we can. Um, yeah, we got the money. We have the we have the technology. Let's spend the money. Remember how last time I didn't spend the money and that bit me in the butt? So we're gonna we're gonna spend some money, right? We might have to tax again later. Not worried about it. And I'm definitely gonna spend. Oh yeah, we're spending money. Okay. I could rally here too in Quang Nam. That actually is not a horrible idea. I'm a little worried. There's a lot of cubes. There's a lot of cubes. Let's just stay focused. Oh, I really should be trying to like spread this out. How many have we already picked? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. Let's just stick with it. Let's just do eight. Eight, eight. eight is fine. All right, we're going to move you down to 12. So we could either flip these guys underground or we could add three gorillas because the population is two. We have one base. Let's double check. I'm almost like 99% sure that is how that works. If a base instead place gorillas up to population plus bases, yes. So we're just going to, how many gorillas do we have? We have 12 gorillas. Plenty, plenty of gorillas. So let's see if we can actually use this to do this right. Okay. Dispatch NVA gorillas. No, 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 no. We want VC gorillas. So we want three. That's one. Uh, but it kind of stacks them. Like, that's okay, I guess. We'll just bring two more up. I guess dragging is kind of annoying, but, you know, stacking is also kind of annoying, too, in its own way. It's just annoying. It's always annoying. Okay, we'll add three there. These guys get two, but that's actually, like, draggable very quickly, so we'll do that. Oh, no, no, no. I can be even close. Actually, he gets three, because that's a two-population space, and he has a base, so that actually worked out great for us. Uh, let's put one here because we don't have a base here. Let's put one in Contum. We're just slowly building that up. We'll put one here in Play Coup. So now we only have three gorillas. And we're going to start running out of spaces to do this. So what we'll do is we'll put one here. So I put three there, but I don't have enough. So I think what we're going to do is so here's what you do you put the most you can. So now, like, if I want to rally and I'm out of things to use, I can instead take a piece off anywhere on the board and just put it there. Okay. Uh, do I want to take a piece from anywhere off the board and put it there? Yeah, we'll take this piece out. Okay. So you return it to available is how that works. Now it magically comes down here. This is a really good thing because, like, here's what we're going to do here. These two guys, I'm just going to, because I can put three here. I mean, I do want to put three here. I don't want to just do this little cycling trick. I do kind of want to put three in there, but I don't think I have any extra. Oh, no, we do. Okay. So I'll move, return this to available. Return that to available. There's a lot of cubes here. Maybe that wasn't smart. We'll keep one there. Keep one active guy there, actually, honestly. And so he gets one. And then what we'll do is we'll just flip these to, honestly, we should have just flipped them save ourselves a few clicks okay so there we go three guys came there okay this is good we've maximized all of our stuff and we've done that so everybody got a little space that's all we're going to do is rally because we can't use a special i don't want the arvin doing anything fun and funky with their plays okay all right infection play arvin gets to do a limited op what would arvin want to do probably want to sweep they probably want to take advantage of some of their cubes everywhere and start sweeping where would they want to sweep oh they want to sweep in contum i bet because that's going to get nasty if if they don't and they only get one op to do something and so i think that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to pay was it three move any arvin troops if we want and it costs three resources yeah so that's what we're going to do and then we activate one gorilla per arvin cube or ranger there and boom, we have a bunch of that. So we'll pay three resources. We kind of want to govern, but we don't have a special op to use, unfortunately. So we'll activate these guys. 
This will keep them from doing shenanigans. I think they don't get to subvert. Yeah, they have to have an underground VC if they want to subvert and do terror or tax. So this is actually kind of like an ambush. This kind of keeps them from pulling shenanigans in Contum, and I think that's it's not the most effective use of three resources, but we're going to do it. Okay. All right, Westmoreland, you are discarded, and we're going to draw a card. All right, the VC or the NBA is up first on this one. Unshaded, remove up to three gorillas from a province with a coin base and set the space to active support. Ooh, that's that's good. That's really good. Um, but it has to be with a coin base, and there's only one place with a coin base, and that's Play Coup, and we have one in Saigon. So and that's not the greatest event. Shaded, remove a coin base from a province with zero to two coin cubes. Uh, U.S. casualties and then set to active opposition. This actually wouldn't help us out at all because this thing has four pieces and Saigon has a lot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they could use this event, the, the unshaded one. They could use it to get rid of the gorilla and play coup, but I don't know if that's really worth it. I think the U.S. would rather do stuff. All right, the poor old... Oh, the VC, did I? I forgot. We paid two, but we didn't improve the trail last time. That was that was dumb. Oh, we didn't, even, we didn't even pay for our stuff last turn. That was brilliant. That's a great way to win the game. Just don't pay for stuff. <sighs> so we, do, we, we, we would kind of want to do an op and special and bombard again because that would just let them either have a limited op or the event. And honestly, like the event is not that great. It's not that great. So I think we're going to do that. Because I want to start really hammering away at them. Now, what's the event? What's the main thing I want to do with this? Bombard, we know what we're going to do there. Oh, all right, I have a guy here. That's hot. We could march. We can march and bombard. That's a good idea. Because if we march into locks, it's free. And then if we ambush later, that can help us get even more cubes out of the way. Which I kind of like that option. Honestly, I like that option a lot. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Although we could rally and start... No, we already have bases here. Yeah, we're doing great. We're actually doing pretty great on the base count. I mean, it would be nice, but we're kind of like out of money. <laughs> we need to be really frugal with our money. We could maybe get some from the VC. You can always trade resources if you want. And maybe the VC will feel take pity on them and start doing that. But I I sort of like to work with work within my means, right? Like I like good budget stuff. So we'll move a gorilla here because it costs nothing to move on to a lock. The Mekong is a lock because it's got a value of one. You can, yeah, you can see that. So the rule is when you move gorillas into spaces, if the number of moving pieces plus the enemy pieces is greater than three, then, or it's three, or yeah, it's greater than three. If I want to get this right. Exceed three, yeah. So if it's greater than three, then you activate all the gorillas that marched because there's just too much, too many eyes in that area, right? So if I moved like three gorillas onto this this lock, they would have to activate. I could move two gorillas and they wouldn't activate, okay? This is not the greatest lock to be on, but at the same time, just having pieces is a good idea. Just getting more out there is a good idea. Um, and that's the only lock that the parrot speed can touch. We'll come up here to Southern Laos. We already have a guy here. That's pretty hot. But we're gonna put one on Route 14. And we'll put one here on, um, not Route 9, but Route 1, because that is technically adjacent. Or can we only do Route 9? That's a good question. It's kind of, no, this feels like it's adjacent. That feels adjacent to me. Yeah. This way we can come in later and use our, like, ambush, because if we're on a lock, we can target an adjacent space to remove stuff, and this, help, this will help us, like, do more damage. So we'll do that. That's all free. All free stuff. And then we're going to bombard here, and we're going to remove another cube um, from Play Coup, because we can bombard from Southern Laos. So now we're starting to do a little damage here. We're starting to do a little damage here in old Play Coup. All right, that's hot. We're doing that. We'll do that in the faction play. Now the U.S. gets to do a limited op or event. What would they like to do? The event is would help them like get rid of that one gorilla in Play Coup, and honestly, they are running out of troops here. 
but they probably would like to do a little more than that. They probably want to start making moves against gorillas in places because we put a bunch of cubes in, on the board, so why not try to, to make that happen? We could try to take this out. This is going to be a nasty little den because it's going to be hard within the mountains to remove them through combat. That's sort of annoying. If we come down here, we could start making moves on Tainin. Tainin is going to become difficult to deal with everything already we would need to bring like a ton of these cubes in to deal with it and honestly that's not a horrible idea we're gonna maybe have to hope for some luck uh or try to get some pieces in here but i think that might be what we try to do is just try to knock out tana and this can be really difficult if they start getting like way too into it but see it's the jungle so we got to bring two cubes in for everyone we want to activate through sweep so i think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna sweep Let's bring up our little fun thing here. Yeah, there we go, there we go. The cost is zero, hot. Move any US troops if desired into adjacent free locks and then into adjacent spaces. This is the other thing why we want to get some like insurgents on locks because then they can't use them to like free move around with sweeps and stuff and that's kind of really nice. Um, and then one for every two if it's a jungle. Okay, so we'll bring in Rumble in the jungle time. Okay, let's hide some of these squirrels over here. Yeah. Make some room for the invading U.S. Two, three, four, and then we'll bring in all six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I should probably stack these, but I just, I like seeing them when they're this big. I'll probably start stacking them if I bring more in. So we brought in 10 things that lets us sweep up to five guys. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. It's not everybody. It's a good thing we rallied there. And honestly, are they going to go first next card? They are going to go first next cards. They probably are going to use... Well, this is kind of the cat and mouse game we're going to play. We're going to start bringing these guys in here, and they're probably, if they're smart, they're going to use their uh, opportunity to rally these guys back underground. That's just the way it goes. It's just the way it goes. Um, so we'll do that. That costs us no resources. We did that. Cool. If we had more than a limited op, I would have probably tried to put pressure on two fronts, or three fronts, honestly. I would have brought guys down here and brought guys down here, and then really start putting pressure on the VC to, like, respond. Um, but I want to try to sweep this out. It can just become such a pain in the butt, and if you can get rid of it sort of early, it's huge. All right. Discard and draw a card. I guess we could have passed since we could have gone first on this one. That's something I did not think about doing. Oh, well, that would have been just real hot. That's what I should have done. Okay. Okay, so here's how that's going to work. <laughs> that event's too good, and I just I wasn't thinking. Sometimes I talk on the stream and not thinking. This event's great, and the U.S. can actually go first. So what we'll do is, if you remember, it was like this. The U.S. will pass. This is actually great for us in a lot of ways. If we do that, the Arvin gets plus three resources because we passed. That's really good for them. And then what happens here is that they go ineligible, but you stay eligible, okay? And now we're up first on this card. So now we're gonna start seeing some interesting effects where we've upset our kind of turn order we've been establishing because this card does everything we wanted to do. US free airlifts into, sweeps in, and then assaults a space with a tunnel. So airlift, I don't think we've actually done the airlift. This is one of their more powerful abilities. We can pick any four spaces and redistribute any U.S. troops up to four regulars, rangers, or Arvin among the selected spaces. So we could move even Arvin guys around. I don't think we're going to do that. I think what we're going to do is bring in, what is it, another two cubes so we can get that sweep, right? Oh, this is perfect. Actually, I think this is perfect. We'll bring in two from Da Nang. Okay. Oh, this is like way, way good. Okay, so we are taking the event. I don't care if the next team gets to go. So we did our free airlift into, sweeps in, 
So we're going to sweep there. And then we assault a space with a tunnel, removing the tunnel bases as if it was not a tunnel. Oh, ho, ho. Merry Christmas to the U.S. All right. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Those to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces exposed. And then we get a free assault. All these pieces go away. Wow. That was incredible. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Uh, remove the tunnel and return it to available. Oh, man. That was so good. It's so hard to get rid of tunnel bases. That, and, and honestly, if we didn't have that event, they probably could have just rallied and brought them all back underground. Oh, oh, that was huge. I, I'm so glad I looked at that. And I'm so glad that we <laughs> we rolled back that turn because that was worth it. Um, and see, look at that event for them. That would have been really hot for them. Select a tunnel space and remove a die roll of US troops within one space of it, which would have been Saigon or something. That, like, geez, that could have been really nasty for us. Oh man, that's so good. Okay, VC goes next. They can add, op and add special activity. Oh, the VC is hurting now. That sucks. They, that was like, that's a stronghold for them. So they got to really start thinking about what they want to do. Yeah, infection play. I think what they want to do is, oh God, that's devastating. That is devastating. I could start ambushing. And uh, that might not be a terrible idea and like really start trying to hurt them. So I could attack and ambush and I can pick one or two spaces because it goes with march or attack. Oh, I could march and ambush. That's pretty That's pretty much a great idea too. Uh, in one or two spaces where a VC gorilla who is marched or is about to attack is underground and then attack, uh, you basically activate only that gorilla and you remove one enemy, no roll. And no VC, because usually when you attack, you like lose guys because you're not as good at fighting, you know, and not taking losses. If you're on a lock, target an adjacent piece if desired. We're doing that. We're doing that. We're, we're pissed. I'm pissed off there. Oh, man, that is so good. Um, I mean, I'd like to rally maybe and get pieces, but we should start. We got to degrade some of this capability. The U.S. is getting a little too powerful and... and and I don't like how they did that. It makes me mad. Um, so we'll march for free over here. Although, honestly, he's got so many pieces, and this was so easy. He's probably going to start flying around and taking things out as fast as he can. So let's... No, I still think this is a good idea. Taking out pieces is good because in the next coup round, it's really going to hurt the more casualties we can inflict. It's really going to hurt the Arvin resources, and it just helps us like start doing damage. All right, so we'll march for free there. We can march to as many spaces as we want to pay for or go for free. Um, ooh, ooh, this could be good too. He's already got a gorilla there. We could get this gorilla out, honestly, march him here. This keeps him a little safer. Yeah, I like that plan. Well, no, well, I could do terror now because honestly, they're just going to like do no. Being really wishy-washy on this. No, let's do that. Let's take this guy over here. Oh, they're already there doing that. That's pretty. That's good work. <sighs> kind of want to put the double pinch on Denang here. Yeah, we'll do that. I keep being indecisive because I'm going to do this instead. March those two guys there. Um, this guy, I do kind of want to do this. This is kind of like a good idea in a lot of ways. I will just march him there. Sorry. So indecisive. March there. And then how can I start hurting? I don't wanna really want to leave these two exposed and they need to probably stay as active as possible. Ah, oh, that sucks. I lost guys here and I couldn't bring it out. And I really don't want to take any more away from there. I want to keep that there. These guys are okay. There's no rule. I don't really care about Arvin. Like, I do want to hurt Arvin, but I'm, I really want to ambush U.S. troops because they're much harder to replace. I think we'll just do that. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. I can't go. I could go down here, but there's nothing really to target here, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay. 
And since we marched, we can now ambush. We can only pick two spaces, one or two spaces, where a VC gorilla who marched is about, and then activate that gorilla, remove one enemy and no VC. And if it's on the lock, you can target an adjacent piece if desired. So I can pick one or two spaces. So I guess I moved a bunch of guys out and I can't double pinch Denang unless I do that. Do I wanna double pinch it then? Yeah, I guess this guy doesn't need, so indecisive. This guy will stay here. Yeah, 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 let's double pinch Denang. So these guys go active, and then we kill two of these guys, send their casualties. Okay, so now there's only two cubes in Denang, so it's actually possible for us to later march one gorilla in there and not be exposed, I think. Pretty sure that's how that'll work out. And we're doing it, man, doing it. We've gotten four pieces in casualties. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. If they hadn't got that event to bring six more in, that actually would have been just really, really good. Okay, so now you can see that like the Arvin wasn't able to go because there's no other box to fill. So now it's going to be this weird thing where like the insurgents get to go together. Or no, it'll be mixed up again, but this time it'll be Arvin and the NBA. Honestly, I think we're going to stop it here because I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter. So we have Domino Theory coming up first. And then Russian arms. Um, yeah, so wow, what an action-packed little area there. That one event was huge. It's not so easy to get rid of all this stuff here. And so that actually helps the U.S. tremendously, but they are taking a lot of casualties, um, which might have to be the strategy for the VC and NBA is like just hold out and just try to take out as many U.S. troops as possible and uh, try not to just suffer the full brunt of like a massive troop presence. And kind of make them pay for bringing a lot of a lot of guys in. The Arvin honestly didn't get to do a whole lot. Hopefully they get a little more opportunity to use their govern ability now. Um, and the VCs got to hang on, man. Losing that Tainan was bad because that the the boner play I did here in play coup is not helping me out at all. Okay, so when we come back, we will keep rolling on the second coup round, and we'll start with Domino Theory. Um, thank you for watching.